but let's uh, get started with how we're gonna set this up. So, Jake, can you take bottom position first? So, there's a couple different passes people call a weave or a leg weave, so I wanna make sure we clarify. When I'm passing from a knee cut position, he puts up a knee shield, pretty proper response to uh, somebody trying to knee cut through, right? So, we come through the middle of the legs, either grabbing top or bottom knee, if you're not familiar, and we try to bring both knees together, sprawl our legs back, typically grabbing up to the lapel, then driving, cutting the corner. This has given me many issues over the years because I really like to play half guard. It's probably my specialty. So from the bottom, I found a lot of trouble once people started getting my knees glued together, and that leg weave really creates an interesting split position where it's really hard for him to come back over or even bring this bottom knee back up to retract to try to maintain guard. So I started developing uh, something a little unique from here, but you'll see if you understand jujitsu well enough, it's not all that unique. It's the blending of two different things. So let's switch positions. So he's trying to knee cut through. He starts leg weaving. I have a knee shield. I know at this point I'm in a bit of trouble. If I continue to push, he's gonna start sprawling down and coming back. I need to come up with something that's gonna prevent this. And rather than just using the legs, I found that if I grabbed the sleeve of the arm that's weaving through and treat this like a lasso, I'm gonna tighten my elbow. I turn my palm to face the same way my chest is. And I've got the ability to control his upper body a bit. So he's kind of glued to this leg. So from here, all I'm gonna do is prop up to this elbow. And then we come out to a dog fight position. So from here, I'm sitting next to him. He can see my back, but he can't quite get there. Let's see this again. I'm gonna show the no gi grip here. It's really easy to get to. This isn't gonna be a long elaborate class that, like I said, flips your whole game on its head. It's just a unique way to play. For this one, I'm gonna reach across his hand. So he's cupping my leg. I reach through and I go palm to palm. Notice I'm gripping over the outside of his hand. So along this back ridge. And as I turn that to my hip, I can do a no gi lasso. Try to pull your arm out. You'll see it's a really strong grip. It's a unique grip but it, it actually holds its place. So from here, a little bit of weight into my left foot so I can lift them off of that bottom leg. And then as we come out, I just want you guys to play from here a bit lightly. What you don't want them to do is cover the head. This is gonna put you back into a bit of trouble. I'd recommend you pull guard again. Maybe just sit back down. But other than that, I haven't found too many people exploiting this position in any disastrous way. As we play, it's really easy for me to be mobile. If I want to, I can just sit back. I noticed that I went from half guard into a seated butterfly guard, starting to advance posi position simply by him just making that leg weave. So one more time. We start here. It's also fine, drop your knee to the floor. It's also fine to just start from a classic half guard if he's weaving through. We're grabbing the sleeve, elbow tight, palm facing the same way as my chest. A Little bit of weight with the left foot. It's gonna help you clear that bottom leg. Elbow, hand, and then just play a little bit lightly from here. Anyone need to see it again? Let's give it a shot, ready? So I'm seeing um, one common issue here, probably could have been explained a bit better the first time around, and it's a classic issue with the lasso. So, if I was going to just lasso Jake, as I go for this movement, his escape is typically this hand weaving through the back. And the way that we block this is by really bringing his wrist up to my hip pocket. So I'm not down here along the side of my thigh. I'm retracting my elbow, almost like I'm in a horse stance for karate. Elbow comes backwards and tight so that his hand is stuck to my hip. If I allow his hand to stick to my thigh, it's gonna be really easy for him to start challenging that grip. So in the same sense here, as he leg weaves, I pull and I start here first. Now I know I can go. I don't wanna do it loosely here. I'm not gonna to get too much of his posture controlled. So as I pull, nice retraction here, we come up. I see a lot of you guys having trouble wrestling in. That's exactly why I like this position. A lot of my training partners are wrestlers first. So they're really looking to just tackle me and I found quite a bit of space to just, okay, we can reset. But as I started getting a little more advanced in jujitsu, I started realizing this position is actually just an open lasso grab. And we're jokingly calling it the dog leash 
because I go to a dog fight position with what looks like a leash. If you've ever walked a dog and they keep stepping over the leash, it's kind of stuck under my leg. <laughs> so as we get here, we can get into something that's simple, probably not gonna work every time, nor does anything else. Some of you guys I already saw starting to do this. I'm gonna take the arm that I'm on and bring the hand through this hole so that I can roll over. As I do that, the lasso hand stays in the pocket so that I can hold my pot. Feel free to finish or transition off of that. I don't care about the submission for the class. It's more the lead up to it that's relevant today. So we grab, make this tight. Come up to dog. From here. Really easy transition to a move that a lot of people have trouble with. You'll find this flows a lot smoother. All that's happening when I come up, I'm putting this through the legs or even in between he and I. Either way, you're gonna find it naturally roll over the shoulder. As you do, make sure you guide his hand to that pocket stool. And you get a good bit of momentum to break that posture. This might be one of the easier omoplatas to find. Pull, open, roll. And you see how much momentum's there. I can drop my hips quite strongly to break the posture. Anyone need to see it again? Oh, I like that. <laughs> I do too. Let's give it a shot, ready? So I've already got this question a few times. Um, where do we go next from here? Can we move on to something uh, a little snazzier? Some of you guys already knew the answer to that, but we're wondering if it's applicable. Um, this one's a little showboaty. It is real, but uh, I think you'll find a lot more fun in this than quite aggressive rolls. Um, one little detail here. As we're setting this position up, some people are coming here and keeping the palm facing themselves. What I really want to do is engage my back. So as I turn my palm upwards, it allows me to row with my back. When I get this friction appropriately, his shoulder gets lowered to me. So if you notice when I come up in this position, it's not far off when, from when someone shoots a single and I give them that Heisman style escape. They feel like they're on my leg, but they're not really on my leg. They're in a failed position already. So with that posture broken and his head not covering over me, he's really in a compromised position. So as we come up, this time as we roll through, we're just gonna continue to circle through. So we roll, keep turning, and we end up in a nice triangle. If you're familiar with that, it's called shoulder hiding triangle. It's really easy from here. Most of the friction in this is coming off of my leg over his back. You wanna make sure you lift your butt and upper shoulder so we're rolling on the center of our back. Some of you naturally have a long flat back. Lift the hips, lift the shoulders, and you'll find you can spin. This is often the issue learning basics, is that you're just slamming into the floor and wondering why you can't move across the floor lightly. So let's make less surface tension by lifting the shoulders and hips. It happens very naturally here anyways. So as I go through, my left foot that's in this leash comes up over his back, and most of the friction is taken away by this elevating my hips comfortably. It will happen mostly natural for you guys. If you're not familiar with this triangle, shoulder gets hidden by this knee, and I can finish right here. No need for bumping the arm up and over. One more time. Palm up, roll through. Let's give it a shot, ready? Let's steal another play out of um, the lasso playbook. This is probably one of my favorite sweeps. If you've rolled with me in the gi, I've probably tried this on you, if not done this to you. Rather than making it all the way up, so maybe we spammed that a few times, he's getting familiar. Maybe I just decide to go here to begin with, but know that you can play this in a repeated system. I come up, I remove my leg, and this time I'm gonna play as if I fell. The big detail here is that I don't keep my left knee, the one that's inside, too tight to his armpit. I wanna loosen this mildly. So as I fall, he sees the pass, and I just continue to open my knee. And he comes right over the top in classic lap for the sweep. If you're not familiar, 
there's wrist lock. I set slides here, may or may not be illegal. If you want to just pass, lift your butt, and you have a near side stick. He comes through, I make that no gi grip, I allow the pass, and I hook. It's probably a lot more likely you can wrist lock or bicep like here. But either way, you sweep by the legs, ready to attack. Anyone need to see it again? Cross it again? Sure. <laughs> this will be confusing for some people because you're allowing the pass. So as I come up, you don't even need to come all the way out to the dog leash. What I want is that top knee lifting a little bit. Release the tension. He cuts a corner. I can grab the pants or not. All of the pressure is coming from this knee. This is not because he's smaller than you. You'll see that even if your partner's larger, they come right over the top. Let's give it a shot, ready? This movement's definitely a little more playful, a little more showboating, probably more applicable to the no gi version of this. If you wrestled, it's, it's just the magic stick from here. If you haven't wrestled, you've probably seen videos of people doing this in tournaments and saying, oh man, that guy's marvelous. So for this one, let's try to not make the gi grip. You'll find that the leverage is a lot easier. As I come up with that palm to palm grip, I come out here. This hand is not so wide this time. I bring my knee back alongside of him. And that way I can kick out and come right around to the top. I find that this works much better than you'd expect because this position causes people to slow down mentally. They think that they're gonna come up around your back. They think they're on a single leg and they freeze even if they're a high level player. I've yet to see anyone that immediately reacts to this position. They need a moment to think because it's so unique. So of course, if you do this to your partner every day, he's gonna get familiar with it and hopefully develop a nice defense to it so you can move on from your game. But competitively, it might give you a quick timing advantage if there's somebody that doesn't have the knowledge here. So you'll see, even for no gi, there's some fluid use of this movement. We're grabbing to the far side of the palm, still keeping it to the hip. As I come up, I kind of get alongside of him, and that way I can loosen this and come around. From here, however you set up your hooks, I'm not gonna get into that and lose a lot of you in the weeds. You can see that this is a dominant position and he's in a lot of trouble. One more time. The big failure point of this will be being too far out here. This is a little harder for me to climb that space back over. So as we're here, I get alongside of him and this becomes really easy. One added detail, watch what I do to his hand. As we get alongside here, once this comes out, pull, and you'll get just a bit more space. It's not gonna do the whole move for you, but you're gonna get three or four more inches, which is gonna make it that much shorter to his back. Anyone need to see it again? One more time. It looks really cool. It's actually quite simple. Palm to palm, up on the elbow. A little bit more alongside of him. Step over, pull the hand. And you'll find yourself floating over. Let's give it a shot, ready? We're done um, with the movement side of class, but I just want to end with a little bit of information. If you recognize where we start this position, we're in a defensive posture. Even though it's somewhat of an offensive position, if you're smart enough, a lot of path, it's not necessarily where you want to be. So if you start to organize your jiu-jitsu a little bit about how do I become the top or attacking player more regularly, we could define that even more thoroughly with how do we find places where the defensive cycle kicks over into an offensive cycle where we're attacking. If you recognize this as just a playful position, that's cool. But if you recognize this as a very unique offensive cycle, almost every failure of one of these moves, as people ask, a few of you, hey, what happens if we end up in close guard? Well, you've advanced one position. Bottom half, you had one leg guarding, bottom closed, now you've got both legs in play. Or hey, that magic stick doesn't work. Okay, well now you're both standing up, or you're at least alongside each other, and you have the potential for offense from here as well. It's a mildly or a distinctly better position than the bottom half was. So if you can recognize the value of the position you start in and where you end, you can start to organize your jiu-jitsu in a way that you'll see value in things that seem novel or, or goofy perhaps. And I think the argument for this position is whether or not those particular uh, sweeps or attacks work for you, recognize that the value of that dog leech position is to put you in an offensive cycle from a place that people aren't expecting. So thank you guys for coming. If you don't mind, we can get a quick picture under the banner and uh